Afrofuturism is a cultural aesthetic, philosophy of science, and philosophy of history that explores the developing intersection of African diaspora culture with technology. It was coined by Mark Dury in 1994 and explored in the late 1990s through conversations led by Alondra Nelson. Afrofuturism addresses themes and concerns of the African diaspora through technoculture and science fiction, encompassing a range of media and artists with a shared interest in envisioning black futures that stem from Afrodiasporic experiences. Seminal Afrofuturistic works include the novels of Samuel R. Delaney and Octavia Butler, the canvases of Jean-Michel Basquiat and Engelbert Metoyer, and the photography of René Cox, the explicitly extraterrestrial mythoi of Parliament Funkadelic, the Johnson Crew, Warp 9, Deltron 3030, and Sun Ra, and the Marvel Comics superhero Black Panther. History Mid-late 20th century development Despite Afrofuturism being coined in 1993, scholars tend to agree that Afrofuturistic music, art and text became more common and widespread in the late 1950s. The Afrofuturist approach to music was first propounded by Sun Ra. Born in Alabama, Sun Ra's music coalesced in Chicago in the mid-1950s, when with the orchestra he began recording music that drew from hard bop and modal sources, creating a new synthesis that used Afrocentric and space-themed titles to reflect Ra's linkage of ancient African culture, specifically Egypt, and the cutting edge of the Space Age. For many years, Ra and his bandmates lived, worked and performed in Philadelphia while touring festivals worldwide. Ra's film Space is the Place shows the orchestra in Oakland in the mid-1970s in full space regalia, replete with science fiction imagery as well as other comedic and musical material. As of 2018, the band was still composing and performing, under the leadership of Marshall Allen. Afrofuturist ideas were taken up in 1975 by George Clinton and his band's Parliament and Funkadelic with his magnum opus Mothership Connection and the subsequent The Clones of Dr. Funkenstein, P. Funk Earth Tour, Funkentelchi vs. The Placebo Syndrome, and Motor Booty Affair. In the thematic underpinnings to P Funk mythology, pure cloned funk, Clinton in his alter ego Starchild spoke of certified Afronauts, capable of funkatizing galaxies. Other musicians typically regarded as working in or greatly influenced by the Afrofuturist tradition include reggae producers Lee Scratch, Perry and Scientist, hip-hop artists Africa Bambata and Tricky, electronic musicians Larry Heard, a guy called Gerald, Wan Atkins, Jeff Mills, Nucleus and Lottie Golden and Richard Schur, electro-hip-hop producer, writers of Warp Nines Light Years Away, a sci-fi tale of ancient alien visitation, described as a cornerstone of early 80s beatbox Afrofuturism. <laughs> Cultural criticism in the 1990s In the early 1990s, a number of cultural critics, notably Mark Dury in his 1994 essay, Black to the Future", began to write about the features they saw as common in African-American science fiction, music, and art. Dere dubbed this phenomenon, "...Afrofuturism". According to cultural critic Kodwo Eshin, British journalist Mark Sinker was theorizing a form of Afrofuturism in the pages of The Wire, a British music magazine. As early as 1992, Afrofuturist ideas have further been expanded by scholars like Alondra Nelson, Greg Tate, Tricia Rose, Kodwo Eshin, and others. 
In an interview, Alondra Nelson explained Afrofuturism as a way of looking at the subject position of black people which covers themes of alienation and aspirations for a utopic future. The idea of alien or other is a theme often explored. Additionally, Nelson notes that discussions around race, access, and technology often bolster uncritical claims about a so-called digital divide. The digital divide overemphasizes the association of racial and economic inequality with limited access to technology. This association then begins to construct blackness as always oppositional to technologically driven chronicles of progress." As a critique of the neo-critical argument that the future's history-less identities will end burdensome stigma, Afrofuturism holds that history should remain a part of identity, particularly in terms of race. Topic. 21st century A new generation of recording artists have embraced Afrofuturism into their music and fashion, including Solange, Rihanna, and Beyoncé. This tradition continues from artists such as Erica Badu, Missy Elliott and Janelle Monet, who incorporated cyborg themes and metallics into their style. Other 21st century musicians who have been characterized as Afrofuturist include singer FKA Twigs, musical duo IB, and DJ, producer Ras G. In more recent years, artists such as Rihanna and Beyoncé have often been interpreted by the public as having some non human elements about them, exhibited in both their performances and in their day to day interactions. Because the tabloids have so much control over the way that information is digested, the public receives images of these women that are distant and controlled solely by the media, and thus, these women are often painted as angry or unfeeling. Scholars such as Robin James have interrogated and expanded upon the work of Kodwo Eshin, and coined the idea of the Robo Diva. These scholars both argue that the black experience has always been more alien than it has been human, and James connects the mechanics of the Middle Passage to alien abduction through concepts of kidnapping, isolation, and bowing down to an unknown power. Kodwo Eshin also posits that perhaps the categorization of human has no use in the black community, and that instead, the category of robot is not only more powerful but more accurately representative of the positioning in the social hierarchy in which black people exist in the present day because musical artists Rihanna Beyonce exhibit such non-human qualities they are often ostracized for being cold or mechanical the white patriarchy both fears and admires such artists due to their unapologetic displays of female sexuality and its interactions with technology. These fears then propel the virgin, whore dichotomy that stems from the trope of the Jezebel, and serves to further the racialized projections of stereotypes onto black females in the music industry. Janelle Monet has made a conscious effort to restore Afrofuturist cosmology to the forefront of urban contemporary music. Her notable works include the music videos, Prime Time and Many Moons, which explore the realms of slavery and freedom through the world of cyborgs and the fashion industry. She is credited with proliferating Afrofuturist funk into a new neo-Afrofuturism by use of her Metropolis-inspired alter ego, Cindy Mayweather, who incites a rebellion against the Great Divide, a secret society, in order to liberate citizens who have fallen under their oppression. 
This archandroid role reflects earlier Afrofuturistic figures Sun Ra and George Clinton, who created their own visuals as extraterrestrial beings rescuing African Americans from the oppressive natures of Earth. Her influences include Metropolis, Blade Runner, and Star Wars. The All Black Wonderland Arts Collective Society, of which Monet is a founder, stated, We believe songs are spaceships. We believe music is the weapon of the future. We believe books are the stars. Other musical artists to emerge since the turn of the millennium regarded as Afrofuturist include D. Bridge, Subtract, Shabazz Palaces, Heavyweight Dub Champion, and Techno Pioneers, Drexia with Gerald Donald. Chicago is home to a vibrant community of artists exploring Afrofuturism. Nick Cave, known for his Soundsuits project, has helped develop younger talent as the director of the graduate fashion program at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Other artists include visual artists Hebrew Brantley as well as contemporary artist Rashid Johnson, a Chicago native currently based in New York. In 2013, Chicago resident Itasha L. Womack wrote the study Afrofuturism, the world of black science fiction and fantasy, and William Hayashi has published all three volumes of his Darkseid trilogy which tells the story of what happens in America when the country discovers African Americans secretly living on the backside of the moon since before the arrival of Neil Armstrong, an extreme vision of segregation imposed by technologically advanced blacks. Krista Franklin, a member of University of Chicago's Arts Incubator, is currently exploring the relation between Afrofuturism and the grotesque through her visual and written work with weaves and collected hair. Recently, she also created an audio narrative in collaboration with another Afrofuturist, Perpetual Rebel, called The 2013 Narratives of Naima Brown, which explores the ideas of identity and transformation within the context of hair and African American culture. The movement has grown globally in the arts. Afrofuturist Society was founded by curator Gia Hamilton in New Orleans. Artists like Demetrius Oliver from New York, Cyrus Kabiru from Nairobi, Lena Iris Victor from Liberia, famed Nigerian-American solar muralist, Shala, and Wanuri Kahiu of Kenya have all steeped their work in the cosmos or sci-fi. Topic. Literature The creation of the term Afrofuturism in the 1990s was often primarily used to categorize speculative fiction that treats African American themes and addresses African American concerns in the context of 20th century technoculture but was soon expanded to include artistic, scientific, and spiritual practices throughout the African diaspora. Contemporary practice retroactively identifies and documents historical instances of Afrofuturist practice and integrates them into the canon. For example, the Dark Matter anthologies edited by Cherie Thomas feature contemporary black science fiction, discuss Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man in her introduction, "'Looking for the Invisible' and also include older works by W. E. B. Du Bois, Charles W. Chestnut, and George S. Schuyler. Lisa Yasek argues that Ralph Ellison's 1952 novel, Invisible Man, should be thought of as a predecessor to Afrofuturist literature. Yashik illustrates that Ellison draws upon Afrofuturist ideas that were not yet prevalent in African American literature. Ellison critiques the traditional visions of black people's future in the United States, but does not provide readers a different future to imagine. Yashik believes that Ellison does not offer any other futures so that the next generation of authors can 
Invisible Man may not be Afrofuturist in the sense that it does not provide a better, or even any, future for black people in the United States, but it can be thought of as a call for people to start thinking and creating art with an Afrofuturist mindset. In this sense, Yashik concludes that Ellison's novel is a canon in Afrofuturistic literature by serving as call for this kind of future historical art. To those who succeed him, a number of contemporary black science fiction and speculative fiction authors have also been characterized as Afrofuturist or as employing Afrofuturist themes. Nnedi Okorava has been labeled this way, both for her Hugo Award winning Binti novella series, and for her novel Who Fears Death. Stephen Barnes has been called an Afrofuturist author for his alternate history novels Lion's Blood and Zulu Heart. N. K. Jemison, Nalo Hopkinson, and Colson Whitehead have also been referred to as Afrofuturist authors. Octavia Butler's novels are often associated with Afrofuturism. This association has been somewhat controversial, since Butler incorporates multi ethnic and multi species communities that insist on hybridity beyond the point of discomfort. However, the fourth book of the science fiction Patternist series, Wild Seed, particularly fits ideas of Afrofuturist thematic concerns, as the narrative of two immortal Africans Doro and Anyanwu features science fiction technologies and an alternate anti-colonialist history of 17th century America. Art. Topic museum and gallery exhibitions In recent years, there have been many museum exhibitions displaying art with Afrofuturist themes. The Studio Museum in Harlem held a major exhibit exploring Afrofuturistic aesthetics from November 14, 2013 to March 9, 2014. The exhibit, called The Shadows Took Shape, displayed more than 60 works of art that looked at recurring themes such as identity in relation to technology, time, and space within African American communities. Artists featured in the exhibit included Derek Adams, Layla Ali, and Khaled Harfas. As a part of the MOMA's PS1 festival, King Brit curated Moondance, a night in the Afro future in 2014. From noon to 6 p.m., on April 13, people could attend Moondance and listen to lectures, live music or watch dance performances in celebration of Afrofuturism in contemporary culture. Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture held a seminal group show of visual Afrofuturists focusing on unambiguous science fiction and fantasy-based art. The show, titled Unveiling Visions, The Alchemy of the Black Imagination ran from October 1, 2015 to January 16, 2016. The closing night coincided with the Schomburg Black Comic Book Day. Unveiling Visions was curated by artist John Jennings, co-founder of artist duo Black Kirby with Professor Stacy Robinson and Afrofuturist scholar Reynaldo Anderson, founder of the Black Speculative Arts Movement. The show featured artists such as Tony Puyer, Sheba Meyer, M. Shindo Kuumba, Eric Wilkerson, Manzel Bowman, Gray Williamson, Tim Fielder, Stacey Robinson, and Sean Allen. Unveiling Vision's liner notes state, Exhibition includes artifacts from the Schomburg collections that are connected to Afrofuturism, black speculative imagination and diasporan cultural production. Offering a fresh perspective on the power of speculative imagination and the struggle for various freedoms of expression in popular culture, Unveiling Visions showcases illustrations and other graphics that highlight those popularly found in science fiction, magical realism and fantasy. 
Items on display include film posters, comics, T-shirts, magazines, CD covers, playbills, religious literature, and more. In April 2016, Niyama Safia Sandy curated an exhibit entitled Black Magic: Afropasts, Afrofutures at the Corridor Gallery in Brooklyn, New York. The multidisciplinary art exhibit looks at the relationship between magical realism and Afrofuturism through the Black Diaspora. In a description of the collection, Sandy stated, There's a lot of looking back and looking forward happening in this work, and there's a lot of celebrating those journeys whether they are intentional or forced journeys. The exhibition Afro Tech and the Future of Reinvention is running from October 21, 2017 until April 22, 2018 at Dortmunder U in Dortmund, Germany and looks at speculative visions of the future and current developments in the field of digital technology by artists and inventors from Africa and the African diaspora the exhibition Black Metropolis 30 years of afrofuturism comics music animation decapitated chickens heroes villains and negroes is a one man show focusing on the career of cartoonist and visual afrofuturist Tim Fielder quote the show, designed to travel over multiple gallery spaces, opened at New York Gallatin Galleries from May 23 to May 30, 2016. Curated by Boston Fielder, the exhibit featured both published and unpublished work ranging from independent comics art for Alternative Magazine, between C&D and mainstream comics work done for Marvel Comics. Black Metropolis, revived at the Hammonds House Museum in Atlanta, Georgia for the museum's 30th anniversary October 12 to November 25, 2018. Topic: Themes. Topic: Feminism. Jared Richardson's Attack of the Boogie Woman, visualizing black women's grotesquery in Afrofuturism assesses how the aesthetic functions as a space for black women to engage with the intersection of topics such as race, gender, and sexuality. The representation and treatment of black female bodies is deconstructed by Afrofuturist contemporaries and amplified to alien and gruesome dimensions by artists such as Wanjichi Mutu and Shoshana Weinberger. Beyoncé's 2016 short film Lemonade included feminist Afrofuturism in its concept. The film featured Ibi, Leilu Senbanjo, Amandla Stenberg, Kuvenzani Wallace, YouTube singing stars Chloe X. Halle, Zendaya, 2015 Sports Illustrated Sportsperson of the Year Serena Williams, and the sophisticated womanist poetry of Somali British writer Warson Shire. The through line is the empowerment of black women referencing both marital relationships and the historical trauma from the enslavement of African Americans from 1619 to 1865, through Reconstruction and Jim Crow 1870 to 1965. The mothers of Trayvon Martin, Cybrina Fulton, Michael Brown, Leslie McFadden, Eric Garner, Gwen Carr are featured holding pictures of their deceased sons in homage to the importance of their lives. The novel Kindred by Octavia Butler also explores the empowerment of women, though the story of her protagonist Dana. The book explores the idea of autonomy and having control over one's life, destiny. Through the exploration of women's power in the time of slavery to the more current time, Butler is able to demonstrate the endurance of women through the harsh social factors. The grotesque 
In the Afro Surreal Manifesto, Afro Surrealism is juxtaposed with European Surrealism, with European Surrealism being empirical. It is consistent with the new black aesthetic in that the art seeks to disturb. It samples from old art pieces updating them with current images. This technique calls to the forefront those past images and the sentiments, memories, or ideas around them and combines them with new images in a way that those of the current generation can still identify. Both seek to disturb, but there is more of a mutant psychology that is going on. Afro-futuristic artists seek to propose a deviant beauty, a beauty in which disembodiment is both inhumane, yet distinct. Afro-futuristic artists speculate on the future, where Afro-surrealism is about the present. <laughs> Alienation Afrofuturism takes representations of the lived realities of black people in the past and present, and re-examines the narratives to attempt to build new truths outside of the dominant cultural narrative. By analyzing the ways in which alienation has occurred, Afrofuturism works to connect the African diaspora with its histories and knowledge of racialized bodies. Space and aliens function as key products of the science fiction elements. Black people are envisioned to have been the first aliens by way of the Middle Passage. Their alien status connotes being in a foreign land with no history, but as also being disconnected from the past via the traditions of slavery where slaves were made to renounce their ties to Africa in service of their slave master. Kodwo Eshin locates the first alienation within the context of the Middle Passage. He writes that Afrofuturist texts work to reimagine slavery and alienation by using extraterrestriality as a hyperbolic trope to explore the historical terms, the everyday implications of forcibly imposed dislocation, and the constitution of black Atlantic subjectivities." This location of dystopian futures and present realities places science fiction and novels built around dystopian societies directly in the tradition of black realities. Water In Afrofuturism, water in many different works symbolizes both erasure and the existence of black life. These dual meanings while seemingly contradictory actually play off and inform each other. For instance, the Middle Passage can be considered where the first erasure happened of African American history. There are no stories that survived that passage. As Ruth Mayer states, in the United States, "...black history is both there and not there, evident in countless traces, scars, and memories, yet largely submerged when it comes to written accounts and first-person documentations of the past from the viewpoint of the victims." Yet, it is through this erasure that Afrofuturism is able to craft histories. These histories live both in fact and in fiction, as the true history was lost in the waters of the Atlantic. Water erased the history, but it also allowed for the creation of a new history. This is where Afrofuturism comes into play. To have a future, one's past must be defined. However, for African Americans, though their «history» has been drowned, Afrofuturism resuscitates this history. By its creation, it creates new possibilities for the future. In Carrie Mae Weems' triptych untitled «Ebo Landing», the Afrofuturism piece crafts a space with two pictures that could be both African and America with its depiction of lush greenery. 
In this way, the piece highlights how the original space of water has given way in which Afrofuturism can imagine a past or future that lives in the space of truth and fiction, the Schrödinger's cat of African-American past. Another example of an Afrofuturist work that deals specifically with the theme of water is 2009 film Pumsy, which depicts an enclosed society in which water is utterly scarce and totally conserved. The film's ambiguous ending leaves viewers wondering whether there was a neighboring society with access to water the whole time, or if the main character has died a heroine by planting a tree that will eventually bloom into a whole forest. <laughs> Reclamation Ostensibly, Afrofuturism has to do with reclaiming the lost identities or lost perspectives that have been subverted or overlooked. When Marc Dury first coined the term, he says Afrofuturism as "...giving rise to a troubling antinomy." This means that the seeming contradiction of a past being snuffed out and the writing of a future sees its possibilities in Afrofuturism. Furthermore, this Afrofuturism kind of storytelling is not regulated to one aspect of communication. It is in novels and essays, academic writings and in music, but by its creation, it is ultimately reclaiming some type of autonomy over one story that has historically been restricted. Therefore, when Afrofuturism manifests itself in the music of the 80s and beyond, it is under the Afrofuturist sensibility. It is in this way that, as Mark Dury says, "...African American culture is Afrofuturist at its heart." Because the ancestors of African Americans were forcibly removed from their history, any culture that has found its way into the black lexicon is at its roots an Afrofuturist notion. It is at its heart reclaiming a past erased and creating a future based on that reimagined past. Afrofuturism 2.0 Afrofuturism 2.0 was coined during an exchange between Alondra Nelson and Reynaldo Anderson at the Alien Bodies Conference in 2013, where Anderson noted that the previous definition was insufficient due to the rise of social media and new technology. Following the publication of the co-edited volume Afrofuturism 2.0, The Rise of Astro-Blackness, in the late 2010s, the black speculative arts movement, a traveling art, comic, and film convention, released a manifesto called Afrofuturism 2.0 and the black speculative arts movement, notes on a manifesto. The manifesto was written by Reynaldo Anderson at Harris Stowe State University as an attempt to redefine and refit Afrofuturism for the 21st century. The 2.0 volume and the manifesto defines Afrofuturism 2.0 as the early 21st century technogenesis of black identity reflecting counter histories, hacking and or appropriating the influence of network software, database logic, cultural analytics, deep remixability, neurosciences, enhancement and augmentation, gender fluidity, posthuman possibility, the speculative sphere with transdisciplinary applications and has grown into an important diasporic techno-cultural pan-African movement." Afrofuturism 2.0 is characterized by five dimensions to include metaphysics, aesthetics, theoretical and applied science, social sciences and programmatic spaces, and in the 21st century is no longer bound to its original definition, 
as a term once dealing with cultural aesthetics and the digital divide, but has been broadened to be known also as a philosophy of science, metaphysics, and geopolitics. In this manifesto, Anderson acknowledges and accounts for the changes in technology, social movements, and even philosophical changes in modern society while also speculating as to how the Afrofuturist narrative will be changed because of it. This is particularly in regards to the rise and boom of social media platforms. In conjunction with this, Los Angeles-based artist Martine Sims penned an online article in 2013 called The Mundane Afrofuturist Manifesto that is composed of a list of tenets that, supposedly, all mundane Afrofuturists recognize. Though the article is in part parodic and sarcastic, it aims to identify and make light of overused tropes within Afrofuturist works like magical Negroes", or references to Sun Ra. Through this identification of overused tropes, and a later definition of rules to actually subvert these tropes entitled, The Mundane Afrofuturist Promise. Sims requests a new, updated vision for Afrofuturist works, which falls in line with the framework of Afrofuturism 2.0. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> List of Afrofuturists. This list is in alphabetical order, by genre, then by last name, or by the first letter of a band group name. Topic: Multimedia artists. Lupe Fiasco, rapper, record producer, entrepreneur. Lonnie Holly, visual artist, performance artist, and musician. Kid Cudi, rapper and actor. Janelle Monet, visual artist, filmmaker, and musician. Ramelzi — visual artist, hip-hop musician, sculptor Musicians and music groups 4 Hero A Tribe Called Quest Erica Badu Clipping Johnson Crew Deltron 3030 Drexia Earth Wind and Fire Fishbone FKA Twigs Flying Lotus Future Man Griot Galaxy Jamila Woods Janelle Monet Janet Jackson Jimi Hendrix J. Lynn Kalela King Brit Klein Kendrick Lamar Living Color Derek May MF Doom Parliament Funkadelic Soul Basement Sun Ra Shabazz Palaces The Space Ape Willow Smith Warp 9 Wu Tang Clan SZA Topic: Visual artists. Sharla, Julie Anderson, Terry Adkins, Darwood Eniabwil, Jean Michel Basquiat, Pedro Bell, Rene Cox, James Eugene, Tim Fielder, Will Focus. Ellen Gallagher Michelin Hess David Huffman John Jennings M. Shindo I. Kuumba Joshua A. Leonard Osborne Makariah Sheba Meyer Engelbert Metoyer Roosevelt Pitt Tony Puyer Stacy Robinson Eric Wilkerson Ashley Woods Topic Writers Tommy Adeyemi Octavia E Butler Samuel R Delaney Codwo Eschen Nancy Farmer Andrea D Hairston 
Nalo Hopkinson N. K. Jemison Anthony Joseph Nnedi Okorava Sherry Smith Rivers Solomon Topic in film Topic in video games In Overwatch, the fictional city of Numbani is a utopian society where Omnics robots with AI and humans live in peace after the end of a war. This city is the setting for one of the game maps. Playable character Orissa, an Omnic, was built in this technologically advanced city by an 11-year-old robotics prodigy EFI Oladell. <laughs>